morning's lesson is from Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have shown them to the babies. Indeed, Father, this brings you happiness. My Father has handed all these things over to me. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one, nobody knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Lord wants to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. But on my yoke, and learn from me, I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks. <laughs> well, how was your week? I'm assuming there were festive things happening since it is 4th of July weekend. Let me put this down here. No? Yeah? Maybe? Not as, ooh, not as much as before. Maybe it was a little calmer this time. A little, a little more tame than what it normally would have been. I know the, the neighbors had quite the uh, uh, pool party. So I guess if you're outside and a bunch of chlorine-filled water, you're in good shape, I guess. <laughs> For some, it was a shorter week. For some others, it wasn't. <laughs> it was much longer. But whatever it was, I, I pray that, that you, uh, your week was found in being rooted, growing, and spreading. I pray for you daily. And I pray that the, the Holy Spirit of God is moving in your life and transforming you and moving you in new directions. That somehow you are finding time and you are hungry to stay rooted that you, your soul and your spirit are not satisfied and that you're looking for that growth and that growing. And that because of those two things, you can't help yourself when it's time to spread the joy and the love of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That's my prayer for you. So far, 2020 has been difficult. We've had to navigate life in ways that we never thought we should could or would. <laughs> we have found ourselves um, taking in a whole lot more information than we're used to. If we listen to the media, we're going to be finding ourselves scared, afraid, constantly worried about a, a virus and a pandemic. And it's real. Many of us know people who have had it or who have died from it. And if we look into our, our social media feed, why we often see that it's uh, just a hoax, that this is a, a political ploy, and, and that there are powers in play that are not the same, right? This is time to get back to normal and, and go trend against the, the system, right? And you're welcome to believe whatever you want. You've always been allowed to believe whatever you want. But I hope that today, as we begin our, our summertime faith series here this, for this month of July, that I'm going to give you some scriptural context to not only you, but about some truth. A context that has been around thousands of years, much longer than news media, much longer than politicians. A truth that has stood the test of time. A truth that always is about the heart of a creator who loves the creation and wants to be in relationship to see you understand things. Today we have the words of Jesus, and, and through July you're going to hear a lot of words of Jesus um, He's the cornerstone of our faith, so why not get information from him 
uh, on how to, to navigate and do things. And so today, you got to backtrack a little here in Matthew 11. And I'm going to take you back to verse 16 and, and give you the context of what's happening in this story. This isn't just Jesus wanting to fill everybody with some good stuff and some knowledge and some comfort, but Jesus is a little upset with believers at this point. He's confused and he's worried about what they're doing. In verse 16, and this is New Living Translation, he says, to what can I compare this generation It is like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. That sounds like Facebook to me. That sounds like turning on my television to me. In the midst of our cancel culture, in the midst of I'm right, you're wrong, in the midst of all those things, I believe Jesus thousands of years ago, remind you, was saying something that's very culturally relevant to us today. And so as he's trying to attempt to to communicate, he starts in verse 25, and he starts in a prayer. And he says, Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever. And... For revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it has pleased you to do it this way. See, Jesus is attempting to say that those who find themselves too smart or too wise to believe this simple gospel message, they're going to find themselves left out. They're going to find themselves so caught up in all their knowledge and all their truth, they, they, they have no idea what really is truth anymore. And so it's a struggle. It's a struggle to believe a simple faith. He's revealed to the childlike. Now that does not mean that he's revealed to the weak or that he's revealed to the simple-minded or dumb in some cases, as we would call it. No, he's revealed to those who are easy to believe in this truth. If you want to know God, you've got to know the Son, is what he says in today's text. And and nobody is going to know the Son unless you can get over that hurdle that is yourself. Because oftentimes we are the, the holders of the keys to that reign, And we are the ones that cause ourselves a lot of grief at times, right? How often do we feel like that within our Christian life, within our our spiritual life? It's like, well, I don't know if I believe that or not. Or maybe it's, oh yeah, I believe that, but then when we walk away, we don't do that. How often do we take the pressure of Christianity, and we make it more than it needs to be. Do we need to have accountability? Sure. Everyone can need some, use some accountability. It, it's how we grow, and it's how we, 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 you know, become better. Growth is part of our thing, right? Rooted, growing, spreading. We're not going to grow if we could just continue to do whatever we want, and there's nobody to hold us accountable. We should always find a faith or our faith in a place that's being tested and moving and growing. Now, a lot of us know what it's like to plant crops or plant a garden. And so how many of you would go and plant that seed and would water it, and the minute that it breaks through the ground and turns green, you try to harvest it? What's going to happen? there's nothing there it hasn't it hasn't grown yet it hasn't matured your faith and your spiritual relationship is exactly the same way from the moment that you first believe from the moment you hear this message of jesus christ this this seed is is being watered and growing and it's it bursts through the ground and as you grow you're going to face horrible weather you're going to face dry days. 
you're going to feel like, man, I am ready to wither up and die. And yet God is still watering, God is still caring, and God is still working in the midst of you. And after a time, after your seasoning is done, you've come to grow, you've come to face all of these things, you've lived victory to victory, there's going to be a harvest for you. And there's going to be a time when God comes to you and makes it all worth it. If this is the case, then why do we make the burden of Christendom so difficult? We tend to do that to ourselves, right? Oftentimes we feel the burden of being better. I've got to, I can't do that. I've got to be better. And, and then we miss the mark of understanding that, that we are fallen, we are broken, we are earthen vessels faulted by sin from birth, and in constant need of being nurtured and growing in that life with Christ. In our first John study this week, in chapter 3, uh, we found John writing to let people know that you are not going to be perfect. We're not. We're always going to make mistakes. We have our share. We have a, a, a part of us and this part is that heart-changing, lifelong process of growing in Christ. There was only one perfect, sinless human being, and that was Jesus, the Son of God. He is the one who has made the sacrifice for our sins and our failures, and He alone is the one that puts that relationship to God the Father correct and right. It has never been about us it has never been about our performance it has never been about us being good enough but it has always been and always will be about christ working within our broken selves to allow the world to see him he sums it up today because he wants the the people that he just called out, right? That generation. Like kids playing in the public square, they complain. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and I am gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Oftentimes we forget that a yoke is occasionally, especially when you have a team of oxen, the yoke is in pairs. And so when you place a yoke around one, you place it around the other. Jesus is telling you, he's, he's already there. He's already fitted with the yoke, and he wants you to take his on yourself. Knowing that you cannot pull it on your own, knowing that you cannot get any ground worked, anything done on your own, he is there, and he wants to share in that yoke. That's why his is easy. That's why his is light. Because in our time of distress, in those days that we just can't anymore, we've got him. We've got this yoke, and he never fails. He never gets tired. He never fades. He pushes and he sometimes drags us along in the process. Friends, if you find yourselves under unbearable weight today, then it's likely because you're trying to rely on your own goodness, your own performance to make yourself right or make us right with the world and with God. And it simply is not a goal that you will ever be able to achieve. If you are feeling stuck in your journey today, let go. 
If you are feeling like you're not ever going to be good enough, let go. If you're in a place where nothing seems to be going right and everything you do is wrong, let go. You are trying to bear a weight and carry your own yoke on a soul that was never intended to be there alone. Jesus' yoke is easy. And he'll help you. He will be there with you through all of it, through thick and thin. It's not as hard as you think. Amen.